one to one to check yo yo so today i'm making a little tutorial kind of explaining how i set up my template in uh, fl studio since a few of you guys requested it i'm gonna try to be as clear as possible and take you through how i set up mine just keep in mind that this tutorial is explaining how i set up my template obviously depending on how you produce you might want to do it differently i'm just gonna give you general tips and tricks so you can maybe have a better workflow and apply these techniques in your production as well so yeah let's get started just before we start i want to make a little announcement recently hit 1k subscribers here I I want to thank you guys all for the support over the past few months, it's been crazy. And to celebrate hitting this milestone, I've recently opened a new community Discord server. You guys can come talk to me and to the community, share the music you make, and be notified whenever I upload something new here. Link to the server is in the description. And yeah, this is all I wanted to say, let's get back to the tutorial. When most of you arrive on FL, this is what you guys see. So you have like uh, an empty project with uh, nothing set up. And the cool thing with FL is that you can set up in advance how you want your FL to load up when you click on new project. So as you can see, if I click on new, I have uh, here written the way template. So that's uh, the custom template I made. So if I go in my template folder right here, this is where all of the templates are saved. But the template is basically in FLP, like uh, every other project you made. So you just have to create what you want, save it as an FLP in this folder, and then it will be accessible under new template and if you want to set a project as the default template you can just go into general settings and then there you have a default template and you can choose the project from the template folder so now on the interesting stuff how do i set up my template and what technique do i use to have a better workflow i'm just gonna start with an empty template first thing that i want to explain is the track modes you just right click on any track or you choose track mode audio track and then you can select an insert so these are corresponding to the insert of your mixer what this does is it allows you to link one of the track here in the playlist with one of the tracks in your mixer for example right here audio track i select insert one but this track is basically linked to this insert right here and if i put any sample in this track right here it's gonna automatically play in the correct insert that you've selected so you can have of course as many of these as you want and so if you set up a bunch of these you can basically already have all your sense for the samples that you want to use in the playlist ready to go the good thing with that is that you you get a lot of time over what most people would do which is just put a sample right here on any track uh, maybe change the insert right here or if you're a bit faster control l and you have it selected but uh, yeah that, that takes extra steps and with the audio tech mode you can just boom, put it right here it's already ready to go in the right one and you can start putting in some effects so yeah that's the first thing that uh, will help you a lot with gaining a lot of time so if i go back to my template what you can see is that i have a bunch of those tracks audio tracks set up right here so if i right click on any of them you can see the track mode is audio track and it's rotated to any of these inserts basically as you can see the playlist is split up into two parts like one bottom one and one the top and the main reason for that is that everything that's going on in, at the bottom here is where i would put my drop stuff basically so everything that's going on in the drops of my song and the things that i would put on top is everything that would go uh, in the intro or the breaks and that way I get separated and it's more clear and I also have like these ones right here these empty channels called auto for automations where I would usually put my automations and I have 10 right here and another 10 at the bottom right here for the drops and the last thing I didn't, didn't show you of course is this one which is also empty it's just a midi one basically where I just put the midi patterns so that's basically it for the tracks so once you have all your audio tracks set up right here, they will all go to the mixer. So what I did in the mixer is group all of the tracks by type. Now if I go over quickly, uh, what I put in these groups, from groups basically kicks now or claps or everything that is not being sidechained basically. Uh, symbols is every drum that needs to be sidechained, so mostly rides, uh, hats. I fix is basically uplifters, risers, downlifters. Uh, synth is my instrument group for the intro. Uh, vocals is obviously like vocals, uh, acapellas and stuff. Uh, back Background is for background stuff in the drop, uh, sub is for my, my sub, and basses is for the drop, every bass of the drop. And all of this group have each one a master bus that every other one is going to. So you can see here all the effects are going to this one. Each group also has a few inserts left on the right of the group each time. And uh, these ones I'm using for VSTs basically, so I would insert your VST and then control L and it's already in the group. So I've left a few every time right here. And uh, by the way, how, how did I know how many of each one I needed? Well basically I did an Excel sheet 
spreadsheet and counting everything based on the previous project that I had. And that way I can fill all the 125 limits that FL Studio has uh, more efficiently. Like, of course, you would have more bases than drums, for example. So the, the, the thing is that we can see right here, it's my bases group, which is a bit particular because you can see here this send uh, that's called bases with sub. And the sub doesn't di directly go to the sidechain bus, but goes to this uh, intermediate bus. The, what I use this bus for, mostly to distort the sub with uh, any of the bases that would be in this group. So as you can see, the bases by default all goes to the bases. But if I wanted one specific base to be distorted together with the sub, I would just write it to this group instead of going to this base. So it just before goes to this one, then to the bases and then to the session. And th that way here, I can put like some, for example, uh, any distortion or I could uh, clip the head out of the sub. And that way you get a very distorted sound, which you cannot really get with uh, separating your bases and your sub. So for, for having a dirtier mix, for example, in a terrell drop, that's really useful. So yeah, I have this setup right here. Once you have all your groups set up and each one has its own master, the main thing that is going on is the sidechain. So a master bus of some of the groups, for example, the vocals, the basses are going to the sidechain bus right here, which is on the right. Uh, by the way, if you guys are wondering, uh, you can put it on the right right here or on the left. You just right click, duck to left or right. And so I have my sidechain here. It's pretty simple. I just have 30 balance that ducks the volume whenever I want. But the interesting thing is how I use this 30 balance. So of course I have an automation clip, but what you might have seen is that I also have a pattern right here and that's what I use to put sidechain next to for example the kick every time the kick hits I would also put the pattern right here most of what you guys would do is use the, directly the automation thing instead of creating a pattern and that would also work but one of the, the things that, that's kind of annoying with doing this when the playhead of the playlist is on top of the automation basically it takes the value of this automation and applies it to whatever things you, you're automating so for example here if my playhead is on top of the sidechain the volume is at zero meaning that if I have anything here that is going to the sidechain as well. For example, if I have this pad right here going to the synths and then to the sidechain, and I try to play it while the playhead is on top of the automation clip, I hear nothing because of course the volume of the section is zero. And if I move the playhead, I can also start to hear it. But yeah, so th that's one annoying thing that you can get. And the easy way to fix that is just to have a pattern with just one node that that's hitting the sidechain. And basically what this does, the automation will only play once the playhead hits the pattern and the note. So you don't have the problem anymore of if it stops right here, you can see here the volume is not zero, but it's the default value. And uh, that way you are not annoyed whenever the player is on top of one of your sidechains. So yeah, that's pretty much what I said to my sidechain. And of course the sidechain then directly goes to the master. And the other thing that you might see that I have on the left here is a reverb send. So basically this is just a fruity reverb to with a little bit of stereo expansion. And at the end I have a fruity balance to turn the reverb on and off. And this fruity balance is being automated by this automation which is created by default in the template. And so I would use that. It's for example here I have a symbol that's going on. I would just route this symbol to the reverb send with an automation right here and as you will hear. The symbol is, is being sent to the reverber. The, that's cool for making like background stuff and making you look more interesting in general. And I have one last send that I use sometimes. It's this one called recording, which I would just like change the mic right here and just to record my mic if I want to record stuff. Talking about the master now, uh, I don't usually put anything on my master as, apart from a soft clipper, which makes sure that nothing is going above zero dB. And I also have one on my basses group because, of course, uh, when you're producing like dubstep and stuff, you might have very high volume coming out of your basses, and you might want to reduce that just before it goes to the section. Because in the section, of course, you are mixing the basses with the background elements, with the symbols and everything, and you don't want your bass to distort the other elements. Uh, maybe sometimes you, you might want that, but uh, in most cases you don't want that. I'm good. just gonna make an example to show you guys. If I take for example a symbol right here, put it in the symbols group and then the bass. Here I have a bass layered on top of the symbol and I'm just gonna crank the bass like really loud that way you can see here it's clipping and if I disable this off clipper you might be able to hear that the symbol is being crushed it's being crushed by the sound because obviously it's going above 0 dB here in the master of the basses and then in the sidechain and since the symbols are also going to the sidechain it's distorted them together so having this little safety precaution right here clipping basically the basses before going to the sidechain makes it so that the symbol plays like cleaner and doesn't get distorted by anything else that could be going on in the, in the bass group so yeah that's pretty much it for the template i think i covered everything uh, editing no way here. Uh, one last thing I didn't mention about the template is how much time it took me to make the entire thing. So 
I remember correctly, it took me about two hours to just like send everything and make all the groups and rename everything. Obviously, depending on how much stuff you actually wrote and rename, it can take more or take less. And uh, I also have had different versions over the years of like making it better and better. So in total, that took me probably a lot of hours just to get my template right. That's what I wanted to add. Let's just get straight to the demonstration. The last thing I want to show you is how quickly it is to use because you might not realize how much time it gains. I'm just gonna make a little thing. Kick, clap, adding the sidechain up on top. Symbols. Symbol automatically gets sidechain because I put it in the right group. I can just duplicate it and I already have a full drum thing going. And I could just add base. Here in the base group, I would add base. Of course, the base is already going to the mixer. I could just process it, like maybe add an EQ, get the already existing sub, but then I could add my own sub, for example. And use my preset, negate sub, and I could just send it to the subgroup. I think to write some notes first. There we go. So you have a sub going, and it's playing here. So then it's going here and to the base groups, so as I explained. And I could just take the, this, this base right here, send it to the one with the sub. Basically, they're all going to the sub, the sub one right now, and I could just do what I really like to do using this mark clip preset. Basically, the, the sound of the bass gets clipped together with the sub, and add a bit of stereo, and... Well, obviously, I didn't mix anything, but yeah, you can see how quickly it is to get something started, get some ideas, and then just turn them into something. You don't have to click a bunch of buttons to send stuff everywhere. You can just do it and go, and just like that, in you know, one minute, I already have an idea going. So yeah, that's basically how useful it is.